Hello guys, welcome to uh, quantum control lectures and our first topic would be the concept of abstract vector spaces. So, since high school we are familiar with the notion of vectors as quantities having both magnitude and direction. We will try to generalize the notion of physical vectors like force, momentum, electric field, magnetic field and all the notions that you have studied in your high school maths, math and physics courses and as well as other physics courses you have studied and treat them as purely mathematical entities with no physical meaning attached to them. Let us try to understand and motivate how this generalization is achieved. So consider the following diagram um, uh, that a vector OP uh, a, a vector alpha ca is can be represented by an arrow drawn here by the vector alpha and you also know that this uh, vector alpha is completely characterized by the just two numbers a1 and a2 which is nothing but the x component of vector alpha and a2 which is the y component of the vector alpha the, okay so what is the what would be the magnitude magnitude of alpha would be square root of a1 square plus a2 square and the direction which is this uh, characterized by this angle theta uh, is given by tan of theta is a2 by a1 okay this is the magnitude and direction and note that the magnitude and direction of this vector alpha is completely characterized by this just two numbers a1 and a2 okay uh, and i will go on further to say that for all vector operations like the scaling that is mu multiplying a scalar and vector addition the numbers a1 and a2 and of course b1 and b2 for the uh, case of vector addition for the other another vector will these numbers would suffice okay if, if you can't see this uh, let us see what is what would happen if we scale or multiply the magnitude of alpha by a scalar k magnitude of k of alpha would be k times a1 squared plus a2 squared with a1 a plus a2 squared under root square root would is nothing but the magnitude of the vector alpha okay if i take the k inside the square root it would become k a1 squared plus k squared a2 squared which is nothing k a1 whole squared plus k a2 whole squared ok it means that the coordinate is, is multiplied by just k just gets multiplied by the scalar k and we have denoted that over here so this is the this k alpha becomes other new vector given by op prime and uh, characterized by the uh, coordinate k of a1 and k of a2 ok that they are getting multiplied by k so consider the if you for the vector addition the diagram adjacent to it if we have two vectors alpha and beta uh, uh, and we want to add these two vectors the parallelogram of vector addition instructs us to put the tail of one vector like the vector alpha on the uh, head of the other vector beta and join and join the origin with the head of the translated alpha and that would be this would be our alpha plus beta vector ok so let us note what would be the coordinate of this 
vector the resultant vector alpha plus beta so if uh, if we imagine the origin to be on the head of uh, of beta then alpha will project the same length a1 in this new coordinate system okay that would be a1 and a2 okay so if we come back to our original diagram the projection would be projection of the resultant vector alpha plus beta on x axis would be a a1 plus b1 and on y axis would be a2 plus b2 so the vector addition is also characterized by these numbers a1 a1 a2 and b1 b2 okay so and the magnitude of of this would be a1 plus b1 whole square a2 plus b2 whole square and the angle angle would be tan of phi the phi is the angle of phi and that would be equal to a2 plus b2 a1 plus b1 so the magnitude and the direction is completely specified by this two set of uh, of numbers whether it be complex or real it okay so and the completely and all the vector uh, operations like the addition vector addition multiplying by a scalar all are can all all can be written in terms of just these numbers a1 a2 b1 b2 okay so this is the first step towards our towards the generalization in our next step generalization from physical to abstract mathematical vector we will consider all ordered pairs of uh, numbers a1 and a1 and a2 representing a point on a plane as a set of vectors okay all the expected properties of physical vectors will be imposed on this ordered pairs okay no it means that not all ordered pairs are can are form a vector only a subset of or ordered pairs of numbers would be considered as vectors they have to satisfy all the expected properties of uh, of physical vectors that is it means that that we know that uh, this set of ordered pair should contain a vector which is uh, denoted by theta and in or and given by this ordered pair of 0 zero, zero that is nothing but the origin okay and here it or we will call it as a zero vector and any vector num this would be this should be included in that subset okay of ordered pairs number 2 we would expect that any vector alpha given by a1 and a2 the ordered pair a1 and b2 should have the additive inverse or uh, given by minus alpha and represented as minus of a1 minus of a2 such that such that alpha plus minus of alpha should give us the zero vector okay and alpha and another property we would expect would be alpha plus beta if alpha and beta are both vectors and beta is same as beta plus alpha that is they commute under vector addition and and the fourth property we would expect uh, would be if i multiply a scalar k to the resultant vector of alpha plus beta 
it would be same as for scaling the alpha uh, vector by the uh, scalar k and then scaling the vector beta by the scalar k and then adding those two vectors i hope you are getting it uh, this is all i'm jotting down the ex expected properties of phys of uh, vectors and if we have a scalar or like this that is a scalar sum of two scalars k1 and k2 scale that with this a vector alpha with that with this scalar uh, would be same as if i scale the vector alpha by this sc uh, scalar k1 and and again and scaling the vector alpha with the scalar k2 and then adding both of them the last thing is k1 times k2 times alpha and k is equal to k1 k2 alpha that is if i scale the vector alpha with the scalar k2 and then uh, uh, scale the vector uh, scale the vector k2 alpha with the scalar k1 is equal to scaling the vector alpha with the scalar k1 times k2 okay scale the vector alpha by scalar that is number the number one is equal to oh, i hope that you are getting what i'm trying to what is my point is that we are taking firstly we are taking the ordered pairs and imposing on that set of uh, ordered pairs the of numbers the expected properties of vectors okay and then we will decide to call the entities which satisfy the above mentioned property as vectors the set they belong to as vector space okay still it is not very formal for formal definition of vector space we would uh, we need to define what we mean by the field f group and abelian group quickly so the next thing would be what is a group sorry before moving on to what on groups i want to bring to your notice that if if you have noticed that uh, for in two dimensional vector space you just needed only two numbers to specify a vector similarly in three dimensional space you would need three numbers one is x uh, component y component and z component similarly you can intuitively extrapolate that in to define n dimensional vector in n dimensional vector space you would need n number of numbers to specify that vector in that space now let us move on to groups so what is a group a group is nothing any but an algebraic system denoted as a set g and a binary operation star which operates on the elements of the set g okay and they satisfy the following axioms number 1 that uh, the if i have two elements from the set g we then the, the a star b its result would also belong to the group g so which is it is this property is called closure property number 2 is if my uh, a comma b and c are taken from the set g then if i binary operate b and b between a b and c and take its result and binary operate with a then it is same as if i binary operate between a and b and take its result and binary operate it with c this property is called associativity property number 
नंबर थ्री वुड वुड बी दैट दिस सेट जी शुड कंटेन एन एलिमेंट कॉल्ड आई डिनोटेड बाय एंड कॉल्ड आइडेंटिटी एलिमेंट एंड व्हिच इज डिफाइंड एज एज द फॉलोइंग इफ आई टेक आई and binary operate with a is same as if i take a and binary operate with i and gives both of them give back to me the same element a then uh, this is the, uh, the how the identity element is defined and this identity element should uh, should be in the set g number fourth property is that that any element a from g should have an element a of prime which is called the inverse of a inverse of a which is defined as a if star a prime and uh, a prime a star both give me the identity element as their result so this is what yeah, is inverse element of a and both of them should be in g this is the fourth axiom uh, <clears throat> if in addition to for this four uh axiom so this if any grow any set g along with an a binary operator star uh, satisfies these four axiom then that set along with this binary operation would be qualified to be called as a group and uh, what uh, uh, form this binary operator star would take would depend on the group of the uh, set g what kind of set g is if it is a set of mat matrices then the star could be the matrix addition or matrix uh, multiplication and uh, if g is a vector it could star could be my uh, vector addition so in addition to for this four properties if uh, my if any group satisfies this fifth property of commutativity so in addition to this four properties if star b and b star a if this satis this uh, property is also satisfied then this fifth property is also satisfied then this group would be called as a n commutative tative group or abelian group so this is what a group is and the next topic is what is a field sorry uh, now a field is again a algebraic system which is denoted by a set f and binary operator denoted by a plus and another binary operator denoted by a dot uh, is an this uh, algebraic system has two closed uh, binary operator plus and dot as i have written uh, here so one is addition what is called addition and another is called uh, multiplication and they operate on the elements of this set f and hence and satisfies the following properties like if the system f along with the set f along with the addition operation form a commutative group and that is they form a commutative group they, and in this groups 
And this group has an identity element and uh, denoted by this uh, zero and it's called zero element and and is de is defined as an element which if a is suppose an element from f and if I add it with zero element the i get the same element again so this is an identity element with respect to the addition operation on the set f number two in the second property it satisfies is if i form a set f of zero by excluding this zero element and and then this system f0 with the multiplication operation form a commutative group forms a commutative group number 3 the multiplication is distributive over addition that is if a plus b times c is equal to a dot c b dot c Okay, this is that is this is what I meant by the dot operator or the multiplication operator is distributive over addition operator plus. Okay, these three are these three properties should be satisfied by any set F. Then that set F would be qualified to be called a field. So it so one thing you should know intuitively that these are nothing but abstracted properties that we would expect from the set of real numbers complex numbers that it doesn't matter that if you take two real numbers and add them in any order you can add them in any order it doesn't matter similarly you can multiply them in any order it doesn't matter and obviously they are distributed the multiplication is distributed on uh, over addition that is the property third so these are all the obvious properties of real uh, number systems that you have read that is complex and real number systems and i abstracted them to form and uh, say by saying them that they are the axioms and anything any mathematical entity satisfying these three would be called as a field so now moving on and sim and sorry consequently these plus and dot need not be these ordinary addition and multiplication as in the case of real and complex numbers so uh, uh, that is uh, a topic of higher mathematics and i won't go into that however in our course we would primarily to deal with the fields of real and real and complex numbers and this plus and dot would have their usual meaning therefore for our purposes the field means the set of real and complex numbers with usual meaning of addition and multiplication operators so moving on we are now ready to define what a vector space is so let us define what a vector space is let f plus and dot be a field and v be a set of vectors along with these uh, vector addition which i have dis differentiated with a plus and a circle encircling it be in this system be an abelian group and a special scalar multiplication with a dot and a circle encircling which associates uh, with each a belonging to the field f and an alpha a vector alpha taken from the set of vectors v 
he then this spe uh, special scalar multiplication between the scalar a and the vector alpha taken from the set of vectors v also belongs to the v okay then this system this entire system v the set of vectors v the field f the scalar addition scalar multiplication the usual scalar multiplication that is the multiplication between two scalars and vector addition uh, then the special scalar multiplication that we have defined just now is called a vector space if for all a and b taken from the field f and and vectors alpha and beta for all vectors alpha and beta taken from the set of vectors v they satisfy the following properties number 1 that a plus b which is again a scalar scalar multiplies with the vector alpha or you can say that it's that vector alpha is scaled by this scalar a plus b is say is equivalent if i scale the uh, vector alpha with the a or i scalar multiply uh, a with alpha uh, and then i scale the vector alpha with the scalar b or i vector uh, scalar multiply uh, between b and alpha and then vector add the both lhs and rhs are, are equal number 2 second property is uh, a if i take a scalar a and scalar multiply with the uh, resultant vector of a plus b b a alpha plus beta and if it is equal to if i scale the vector alpha which is again a vector and i scale the vector beta with a which is also an vector and then vec uh, vector at the okay is both of them are same number 3 uh, if i scalar multiply two scalars the usual scalar multiplication and the special and then uh, take its result and uh, scale it use it to scale the uh, vector alpha is same as if i scale the vector alpha with b and then uh, scale the uh, the resultant vector with a both of them are equal number 4 and, and uh, this is an obvious property that if i take the identity of the field f that it which is denoted by this number 1 and and scale use it to scale the vector alpha is gives me the same vector alpha so all this four properties need to be satisfied and then this entire system where this this entire system would be called as a vector space over the field f that is the language that is how we will say that we this entire system is a vector space over the field f so once again for avoid to avoid any confusion i would uh, uh, jot down what this special operators i have used in the definition this is the vector addition that is addition among vectors and uh, this is the special scalar multiplication which is the multiplication between a scalar and a vector 
scalar multiplication with a vector and this is the usual scalar addition that is the addition among scalar and mm, this dot is the scalar multiplication the usual scalar multiplication that is multiplication among scalars so uh, last thing it would be if my field f is a is a set of real numbers then the vector space would be called a real vector space vector space and if my field is complex then it would be complex vector space vector space so and any subset of if i take any subset from the set of vectors and form a subset from the set of vectors and they also uh, satisfies the above four properties then that uh, subset would be would be called as a subspace of the vector space subspace of the vector sp vector space v the set v the set f dot And then that would be like the plane is a 2D plane is the subspace of of 3D real space. So that's uh, what we mean by a vector space. Okay. So our next topic uh, is what is called as basis. Uh, now that we have refreshed what uh, and uh, refreshed and recalled what a vector space is, so I would like to assert that they are akin to the three D uh, real space, real space we live in. So, like we have, like we define a grid or coordinate system to mathematically define a point in space, which is likely to change with the change of choice of grid. The actual representation of it likely to change with the change of grid or coordinate system. This happens because grid is not the inherent property of the space, but instead it is us who define it to study it. So the basis is akin to coordinate system which is required to study the abstract vector space which can be more than three dimension and can be can have a complex value coordinate so formally any set of vectors taken from the set of vectors v which is uh, which forms the vector space is will be said to be the basis of the vector space if it satisfies the following two properties number 1 if i take n vectors that is same number of vectors as uh, as the dimension of the vector space v if it is n dimension and take a linear combination of this n vectors a and v n and and if it says that the sum is equal to 0 then this set v1 to v n will be called r should be linearly independent if 
if and only if if uh, the uh, this equality is only achieved if my coefficients a1 equal to a2 equal to a3 up to a n are individually equal to 0 okay then this set would be a linear independent that is the first requirement of choice of basis vectors that is they should be linearly independent that is how we mathematically say the vectors are linearly independent So number two, the number two property that we need to be satisfied is for every vector from V, vector from V can be expressed as linear combination of this set of vectors which are linearly independent. That is, if I take a vector small v from the set of uh, vectors capital V then this small v can be written as linear combination of these uh, vectors a1, b1, a2, v2 up to an, vn ok if and only if and only up to a n are uh, taken from the set f that is a field uh, if, uh, if the field is real then this a1 a2 a n are real numbers and if the field is complex then a1 a2 a n are complex numbers so these uh, two requirements need to be satisfied for a uh, set of vectors to be called to form a basis of this vector space V. So now uh, let us uh, let refresh and uh, uh, recollect what we have done till now and take lessons from it. So we, as we have introduced the notion of vectors and abstract vectors spaces, starting from the physical vectors. As uh, you uh, that you have al already know, and using our intuition of 3D Euclidean spaces, respectively. Okay, we have used it, uh, used both of them to define and understand what a no uh, abstract vector and abstract vector spaces are. Then what we have done is codified and jotted down all the properties we expect and learned. And uh, in previous courses and classes or in high school about vectors and declared that any mathematical entity which satisfies these properties will be called and uh, called will be called and vectors and some collection of them that is a set as vector spaces. Then we have defined what we mean by basis by using our knowledge of coordinate system. And again, use the properties we expect from coordinate system as the definition of it. Okay. Note one thing we haven't uh, used as a requirement of uh, basis, which is is there in the case of coordinate system, is the notion of ortho. We never bothered about uh, imposing the requirement of orthogonality. You, if you know that those uh, unit vectors which which were of unit magnitude and were aligned to all the three mutually orthogonal directions in 3D space, we didn't impose that requirement on the basis vectors. These two properties, it was found that if we if any set of vectors just uh, satisfy these two properties of basis. The uh, these uh, two properties, then it is sufficient to describe the entire abstract space. That is, any vector in the uh, abstract vector space would be can be written as linear combination of these basis vectors. So, 
बट वी कैन नॉट परपेचुअली कीप अवॉर्डिंग इट बिकॉज मेनी फ्यूचर कॉन्सेप्ट विच वी गॉन अ स्टडी विल रिक्वायर सो लेट एस रिफ्रेश वॉट वी आर ऑलरेडी नो अबाउट ऑर्थेगनैलिटी और परपेंडिकुलरिटी ऑफ वैक्टर्स इन थ्री डी ऑर्डनरी यूक्लिडियन स्पेस ओके सो एस वी हैव सेड दैट the any pair of vector are said to be orthogonal if you remember if their dot product if you remember dot product is zero okay if the dot product vanishes then we would say that though two vectors which participated in dot product are orthogonal to each other and how we defined the uh, exact expression of two vectors if i take a and b b two vectors then it was defined as the magnitude of the a first vector multiplied with the magnitude of the second vector and the cos cosine of the angle between them so it means that and this is the angle theta is the angle between these two vectors and if my dot product was zero and we if we know that this both of the magnitude are not individually zero then it mean we it would mean that this uh, cos or cosine of theta is equal to zero and theta which only happens when theta is um nice is 90 degree or multiple of 90 degrees okay it means that they are orthogonal vectors so that is how we defined uh, orthogonality for ordinary euclidean 3d space real space so dot product also gives us another way to look at the magnitude of vectors that is if i had a have a vector alpha then its magnitude alpha its magnitude is square root of the dot product with itself right because you can see it if i use this particular expression of dot product is nothing okay so unit vector a, a, then we have defined what a unit vector is unit vector is is one that has unit dot product with itself so all these things you already know so and then observe that the dot product can be thought of as a function that takes two vectors and gives a scalar as an output if that is this is a function can be thought of as a function which takes two vectors and gives output as a, a scalar okay so and f could be real or complex depending on what kind of vector space it is and let us denote this special function as this uh, angle brackets with two dots hertz uh, inside them and separated by a comma here in the position of dots goes are two vectors note that we have already abstracted the dot product in this point of view because we are not referring to any exact expression that this uh, dot product takes then the urban dot product becomes a special case so the next step is only to impose all the previously learned intuitive and expected properties of dot product on our abstract dot product this okay in a, in its definition and mathematicians named this abstract dot product as inner product and any space as uh, which has a valid 
in our product that is satisfies all the properties of inner product given in the definition of it as inner inner product space inner product space so definition is is if if we denote the field or scalars by f and which can be a, a field of either real number of a complex number then formally the inner product space is a vector space v over the field f together with an inner product that is a map v cross v that, that takes in two vectors and gives a uh, outer scalar that satisfies the following three properties or axioms for all vector x y and z taken from the set of uh, from the vector space v and all the scalars a taken from the field f number 1 that if uh, the dot the inner product between the x vector and the y vector sorry this is angle bracket is same as if i take this y first in the first dot and then and uh, take the x vector in the second argument that is i take the y vector in the first argument and take the x in the second argument that is reverse the order of their uh, uh, of the input vectors and put a bar over them that is i conjugate the uh, take a complex conjugate in case we are dealing with uh, the comp complex vector space so in our, obviously in a uh, real space this would have no meaning so so the if this happens this is the first requirement called this is this property is called con property of conjugate symmetry okay number 2 requirement is if uh, if i take a scaled vector x that is it is scaled by the scalar a and take its inner product with the uh, vector y then this scalar a comes out of the uh, inner product Uh, this and num this along with this, if I s vector add x and y and take its uh, inner product with the third with the third vector is same as if I take the dot product between x and z and dot product between y and z and uh, if and and add the both the results. of these dot products so and the third property in this property is called linearity in the first argument linearity in the first argument okay that is you can see that in this scalar comes out if i multiply this in the first argument and this sum gets decomposed in individual sum if i if i take a sum vector sum in the first argument these two are if these two are satisfied then then it is uh, it is called linearity in the first argument okay 
दिस इज वॉट आई वी मीन बाई लिनियरिटी इन दी फर्स्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट नंबर थर्ड प्रॉपर्टी इट नीड्स टू सेटिस्फाई इज If I take two vectors x x, if I did take dot product uh, of a vector x with itself, then it has to be uh, give me a positive number. Okay, is it has to give me a positive number, and uh, and this if my dot product vanishes, that is. Equal is equal to zero, then it should imply that x it it or it happens only if my the uh, the a x vector is equal to zero. This only happens in that is in this case only. So if this map has to satisfy this, then this map would qualify to be called an inner product. So. This is called the positive definiteness property. So these three things has to that uh, is have to be satisfied by this map. Okay. then it is called as an inner product and also think that also one thing i want to clear that this if we take the inner product so inner product of a vector with itself it has to give me a real number because the notion of positive and negative is only defined for real numbers not complex numbers there is nothing as negative complex number or neg uh, negative uh, positive complex numbers so it has to give me a positive number and if i take an inner product of a vector with itself so moving on to wash everything down we have learned so far or uh, i would recommend watching the uh, three blue one brown video about abstract vector space that is very good uh, explanation that uh, in this video of abstract vector space very intuitive and with all lots of uh, animation and uh, so i think you should watch it so you are to completely grasp and intuitively feel what the an abstract vector space is so i think that would be it uh, for our first lecture and so thank you for your attention and uh, see you in the next class bye